Hey, today we're going to take a look at some statistics. I hope you like statistics because that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hi, this is Randy Kirk. If you like it, let me know that you like it. Um, if you want to uh, subscribe and notify, all that stuff would be good. We're going to dig into how can Tesla and the rest of the BEV world take over the world. Um, you know, if you follow my channel, I'm saying by 2027, you will virtually have 100% of the manufacturing taking place around the world, 100% or near 100% will be BEVs, the ice age will have ended. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, don't agree with me. There are people who think it'll be 2030. There are people who think it'll be 2035. Uh, Corey Steuben uh, famously said the other day that he thinks it'll only be 50% BEV by 2030. And I just, um, I don't agree. I think we're definitely going to get there by 2027. Hey, if I'm a year off and it's 2028, I, I'll still count that as a win, won't you? All right. So what does it take to get there? And why do why do you think that I have such high um, a high, high feelings that this is going to be doable. All right, let's start with this map of the United States. What you see here is the uh, registrations per thousand people of, it says PEV. I am assuming that they mean, uh, this looks like EV and plug-in together as I'm looking at this from the Department of Energy. So in the state of California, you have 27.55% of the cars being purchased last year were, I mean, I said percent, that is incorrect. 27 out of a thousand people uh, bought either a BEV or a hybrid car last year. Now you go across the country, you're noticing that it gets lighter and lighter and lighter in color uh, until you get to the East Coast and then you see a little darkening again. But by and large, the mass, mass, mass number of the electric vehicles are being purchased in California. Now, I don't care about the hybrids. I think they'll just go away of their own free will. I doubt whether they'll be, have, have any impact probably after 2026. They'll probably be gone by 2026 because the cost of the BEV is coming down so fast that there'll be no reason to own a hybrid. There'll be no advantage to the hybrid. So what do we see here? We see California way, way ahead. Now, what people will give you about three reasons for that. They say Californians commute further. They say that Californians have to pay way more for their gas, so therefore there's a much bigger advantage. And they'll say that California is wealthier, which all three of those things are true. I don't think that those are the main reasons. I think the main reason is, is because they're popular, <laughs> because it's, an, it's the in thing. When I moved to California a very, very long time ago, uh, I realized immediately that, that California was two years ahead of St. Louis, where I came from, two years ahead in anything that was fashionable. Uh, it didn't matter what that was. I cared way more about fashion then than I do now. And, and it, was, it was clear that the fashions were starting in California and then moving across the rest of the country. And there was about a two-year lag time on that. That's been confirmed by everything I know in marketing. Now, there's a little bit of the East Coast, too. You get New York and Florida you know, having an impact also and things coming back towards the Midwest from New York and, and Florida as well. But almost the vast majority of of mass market fashion starts in the state of California. So why is the rest of the country taking maybe longer than we thought it might take? Well, then you can start to think about those other things. There are people who think that charging stations is the biggest reason. I don't think that's true because I think there are now charging stations everywhere. I think that pretty much people are seeing it when they go to their Target or when they go to uh, other kinds of local um, uh, malls, they'll see a Tesla charging station. They will see Target. They'll see Teslas pulling in and out. And you'll see lots and lots of Teslas around these areas where the charging stations are. And so I think that that uh, the Midwest probably is beginning to see that there are, is probably plenty of charging. They've probably heard from their friends who own Teslas that there's really plenty of charging. Now, Newsweek and U.S. News and World Report and Time and uh, you know, the New York Times and whatnot are still putting out these stupid articles where people are going on a trip in one of the non-Tesla vehicles and they're reporting back at how hard it was to find a charging station and how the charging stations didn't work and it took so long to fill it up and everything else. But the truth of the matter is you and I know that that's not true for Teslas. And now Tesla is opening up their charging stations to all comers 
it'll be over the next year or so before that happens. But as that happens, that's going to open up more and more of these other states, of these other localities for people to be interested in BEV. So if that's the number one reason, that will slowly go away as all this takes place. Of course, we also have uh, the federal government putting in a bunch of these charging stations also. Uh, they've, they're contracting for literally thousands and thousands of these to go in. Of course, we know how that usually works out. So those charging stations probably won't work either and they'll be in the wrong locations, but at least Tesla will be covering the country shortly and people will start to uh, recognize that that's true. The next thing people will talk about is, of course, the high gas prices in California. That's That change is not going to take place, but why does that create more of an incentive? Mostly because you look at the overall cost of owning the vehicle. Well, the overall cost of the owning the vehicle is going down dramatically because the sticker price is going down dramatically, and it's not just Tesla. We have uh, uh, BYD just announcing it won't be sold in the United States yet, but they have an $11,000 BEV. Uh, there's going to be other BEVs coming out in the 20s. Uh, you can buy a Tesla right now for low 30s with when you take into consideration the investment, the uh, what do you call it, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, get your 3750 off. I think it brings the cost down to about 35,000 uh, for a uh, Tesla Model 3 in the, in the uh, opening prices. We have Tesla moving next year, the end of 2024 into 2025. They will start making their uh, generation three vehicles, which will definitely be in the 20s. And then if you take your 7,500 off of that, now you're talking about in the teens. So the cost is going to come down so much that the rest of these folks in the Midwest and the East Coast, they're going to start to realize what a deal it is to have an electric car that's faster, performs better, safer probably, certainly if it's Tesla, um, and uh, also it just costs a, a lot less to own. So I don't think this is going to be an issue. If you've already got 27% in California, um, my guess would be that goes up to 30s this next year, up to 50s, 60s. You're going to be at 100%. No problem by uh, 20, uh, uh, 27, my, my, my goal. And I think that this S curve will start hitting the rest of the country, you know, over the next couple of years as the prices come down um, and, uh, and, and the number of pumps, the number of of uh, units that can be, can be used for charging goes up. Now, getting lots of, of these charging units also in apartment buildings, getting them in places of, of employment, getting them in uh, restaurants and things like that where people have a lot of availability for where they can get their car charged, that'll be a, a great help as well. Now let's look at the worldwide picture. Let me close this one and get to the worldwide picture. So if you can see this, this is a uh, these, there's no hybrids in this one. This is all just BEVs. I think uh, starting out with, let's take a look at, can you see here, you got China, Europe, and the United States, the three huge markets for vehicles. Um, and you can see here, uh, the total number of vehicles sold last year was 81 million. You can see that 13.7 million of those were sold in the United States, 11.2 in Europe, and 23 in China. You add that all together, it's just about 50 million. So 50 of the 80 are over 60% of all the cars were sold in those three places. China is already over 35%. So China getting to 100% by 2027 is a no brainer. Now that means that almost 33%, um, almost somewhere close to 33% of all the cars uh, in the world will be BEVs. Uh, 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 just because of China. You've got Europe, which is already at over 20%, and some of the countries like Denmark and uh, Norway, uh, I'm mean, sorry, Norway, which is uh, 79%, it says over here, if you can follow my cursor over here, it's at 79%. Uh, you've got other countries at 32. Again, I don't think Europe, I, I maybe, maybe even uh, uh, people who are doubting my analysis would agree that Europe is probably going to make it to 100% by 2027. Uh, remember that there's a certain point at which it won't be up to the consumer. It'll be up to the manufacturers where the manufacturers will say, we're just not going to make any more ice cars. There's not enough volume. We're not making enough of these different units to be able to justify continuing to make them. And so they'll just slowly but surely take them off the market. So you could get into a situation, let's say in 2027, where there's 80 million demand and there's only 65 million cars being made and they're all ice. 
That's a very real possibility. And 50, 15 million people who want cars may not be able to get them as quickly as they'd like to get them. My uh, conclusion would be that Tesla, BYD, and others will fill that void very, very quickly in 2028 and 2029. We're not going to need to even get to 2030 to get to the 100% level. So those three countries make up 66%. Now you get to, now listen to the next highest areas, Germany, United Kingdom, France, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands. Um, all of these countries um, will be moving quickly. You got an outlier here, Japan. Japan is not moving that quickly. But Australia, who's a late bloomer, is coming on very, very strong. Um, they even had uh, uh, 2,100 vehicles. I'm sorry, if I got the right list here. Um, they had 20, I'm sorry, go back over here. They had 33,000 vehicles in Australia last year that were BEVs. That's a 169% increase over the prior year. Prior year. So uh, New Zealand, same idea, 135% increase with 16,000. So you can see that in some of these countries where they haven't had much access to BEVs, once they hit, then it goes crazy. Now, what about, um, some people would say, well, what about the smaller countries? Well, first of all, the smaller countries that don't have high GDPs that are, are even average earnings per person, they're not buying luxury new, new luxury cars anyway. They're not they're not even buying twenty five thousand dollar vehicles. They're buying used vehicles, or they're buying sixteen thousand and twelve thousand dollar vehicles. Well, again, BYD has now got an eleven thousand uh, dollar BE uh, and uh, 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 battery electric vehicle BEV, and. And BYD is one of the companies who is out in a lot of these smaller areas, a lot of these uh, places where folks can't afford the more expensive cars. So it won't be just BYD, it will be all of your Chinese manufacturers will be flooding these zones. They'll not only be making them in China, they'll be making them in these countries. They'll be switching over their factories they already have there to these uh, less expensive B B B EV cars. So um, could there be a few countries and a few outlying variations of cars, and even in the United States, could there be some niche situations where they're not switched over 100% to uh, BEVs in 2027? Sure there can. I'm almost certain there will be, but the vast majority of the cars sold at that point will be BEVs. Now, you also have the used car market. So remember that as the entire market is growing, so is the used car uh, availability. So as these used cars come on the marketplace, now you are also going down market, if you will. Uh, somebody that paid thirty-five or paid forty or forty-five thousand dollars for a Model Three or Model Y, uh, when they go to sell it, they might be uh, five years later. They might be only getting thirty or twenty-five. So now somebody that can afford twenty-five or thirty uh, is going to be able to step up to the plate and get the car. So that's going to be true across the board. Um, so you have a full range of used vehicles that will start to become available, not just in the United States, but also in China, in Europe, et cetera, where you'll start to be able to address the entire marketplace. So once again, this is just another way of showing you how we get to the 2027, where I believe it'll be virtually 100%, and if I'm off by a year, oh well. Okay, so <laughs> if you like this video, if this was useful, if it, if it was entertaining, if you didn't mind all these doggone numbers, um, and then I'll have these uh, down in the description below. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, hit notify. I've got a, a video coming up uh, tomorrow. Uh, it'll either be tomorrow or Wednesday, but I think it'll be tomorrow with Scott and John talking about Optimus that you were going to love. It's going to, it's an incredible video. So hit notify. So you'll be reminded of that. And then go ahead and uh, join Patreon. I could uh, use the help supporting the channel. It's only $5 a month if you can afford it. All right. It's been great talking to you.